Yeah. I think I've died and gone to Thai street food heaven. Right behind me here is the entrance to paradise, street food heaven in Thailand. We are in the capital, Bangkok, and this is Chinatown, where I think is one of the most hustle and bustle night markets this city has to offer. This is one of the places you must try, T and K. It's the seafood stall here. Cup and cup. We're gonna sit down for some seafood. The uncle here sat down with me to take my order. I'm going with the stir fry squid with chili powder. A roy cup? A roy cup. A uh, roy cup. Cup and cup. <laughs> yeah. Guys, right here, first plate has arrived. The stir fry squid with curry. Uh, it smells good, and we're starting the night off right away. Oh, yeah. Not spicy at all. In fact, this could probably use a little kick. There we go. We're kicking it up, pushing it to a level. And one of the first things that you want to get when you're in Chinatown is a cold beer, and it goes along well with the seafood on the street. Now, T&K offers inside dining. Oh, this is delicious. In there, You'll have air conditioning. You might have to wait a little while for a table. I prefer the atmosphere right here with the motorbikes buzzing by, the Bangkok sweat going on, and curbside dining. I mean, after all, this is Bangkok. You're gonna sweat a little bit. They agree. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Luckily, the Thai gods have given us the perfect cure for the heat. What I like about this place, they offer small proportions, so you can come in here, try a few different dishes. For this right here, 200 Thai baht. That's around about $4.50. And I just love, this is one of the best things about Thailand, to be able to eat right here, curbside, street side. We have our squid, we have our curry. Also, we have the tuk-tuks, the taxis, the motorbikes going by, all the atmosphere. The police are there as well. Already we've had a good first plate of the night here in our street food extravaganza journey. What's a street food like in your home city, in your hometown? Drop some comments down below. Do you have a street food situation like this where you can go out and dine on the street, get some cheap eats? I'm curious because here in Bangkok, it's a unique place. Oh, look at these guys right here. Wow. Oh. We might have to come back to these guys later. There are so many options here that you can walk around and see the foods on offer. I'm so impressed with Bangkok. Again, I haven't seen something like this anywhere else in the world. Let me know down in the comments what it's like in your city. Look at this, this is great. Everybody's jammed in at tables. Every night around dusk, around sunset, this place comes alive. This is Yar Rat Street, cutting right through the center of, Chi of Chinatown. Plastic stools are put out, metal tables are scattered about, food stalls arrive, because at that time, only one thing matters. Food, food, and more food. You'll see noodles, fruits, juices, dim sum, fish, all sorts of food being served up on sticks as well. Surrender to the smells, the flavors, and the frenzy because this is Chinatown at its best. A little pro tip when you're in Chinatown or any town in Southeast Asia is a look for the 7-Eleven or any sort of convenience store like a Lawson's a Food Mart because in there you can get a cheap beer, a 12 ounce beer that goes perfect with street food that you pick up here along the way. It'll set you back around 40, 45 Thai baht for a 12 ounce can. And that's really going on the cheap around here because think about it, 40 Thai baht, that's around about $1.25 for a cold beer. And that goes perfect with some uh, warm street food. We have a couple of things going on right here. More squid being served up and right over my right hand shoulder. Some chestnuts roasting to let us know, well, yeah, this is winter, despite it being something like 30 degrees Celsius here in Bangkok. We are slowly making our way 
down this street. I have another place in mind just up this way. I visited uh, last time I was down here in Chinatown, but I just want to show you. I mean, there's all sorts of shops you can go in besides the street food stalls. There are little restaurants tucked in the street here. So if you see a restaurant that you think looks interesting, dive into it, try the food. Inside there, there's air conditioning and a chance to cool off if the Thai heat is a bit too much for you. The sound of life, the sound of Thailand, the sound of Bangkok, the sound of goodness. Look at her right there. She's got something steaming in there in that pot. We got some small, I think these are quell eggs here. We got, oh, tuk tuk buzzing behind us. If you can, I suggest you get down here around about five o'clock. Chance to take some photos, kind of preview a little bit what you might want to eat. For example, T and K, when I arrived there around 6 p.m., there was hardly anyone there. There was maybe a quarter of the tables occupied. When I left, it was packed out and people were waiting to get tables. So get down here around 5, 5.30, right before the sun goes down, and you'll be able to maximize your visit to Chinatown. So we are trying to make our way across from one side of the street to the other. It's like a game of Frogger out here. You don't want to get run over by a motorbike, and our next spot is right over this way. looking at right here is Koi Job and it's the Koi Job Nam Sai. That's the only Koi Job that you can get here in this place. It's, it's particularly special when you're in Chinatown in Bangkok because in this peppery broth soup, of course you have the rolled rice noodles but then you have the pork belly. We saw the chef there chopping it up there on his wooden block, popping it in the broth. In that broth, it's a strong peppery taste. Let's just get a little taste of that. Oh, yeah, that's peppery. If you like, and they'll ask you here, and they ask me in English, do you want the organs? Do you want the innards? Say yes, say yes, say yes. But if you say no, well, we can still be friends. Yeah, so we see in here some pork innards as well, along with the pork belly. We got the rice noodles. It's a combination, a perfect combination of goodness. All right, that's a good mouthful. I kicked it up a bit with some sauce and some peppers sprinkled in there. Overall, it's still pretty mild. Some people like, some people don't like the peppery broth, but, mm. oh, the crunchy pork belly, oh. You can just hear it crackle and crunch in between your teeth. But I suggest you get down here and you try some of this peppery broth. Now what impresses me here is a fast, well, fast food. People are sitting down, getting a bowl of these rolled noodles with the pork, slurping it down on a warm winter's night, and then on their way. I'm working through it too, but it's hot. The soup is hot, it's peppery, it's just chili, spice kicked up. It's a lot to work through, but it is good. Only 60 Thai pot. What a bargain. This Chinatown, Bangkok, is one of the largest, if not the largest Chinatowns in the entire world. It's the heart of the hustle and bustle, the food and the fun, the sights and the sounds. You gotta put Chinatown on your hit list when you're in Bangkok. The core of the food and fun is along this main 1.5 kilometer stretch of road that runs snakes through here like a dragon's tail called Yarl Rat Road and it lends its name to this entire area of Chinatown. In fact, many of the Thai will simply refer to Chinatown as Yarl Rat. It's one of those historical districts that even the food aside, you should get down here day or night, morning or night, because in the morning, early hours, this place is really spectacular to check out, especially for street photography and Instagram. And of course at night for getting your food on and the neon signs and all the nightlife that comes along with a Chinatown. This right here, you can smell it. That pointy fruit, that's durian. Drop some comments down below if you've ever eaten this stinky, 
This smelly fruit, it tastes delicious, but you have to get past the odor. It can be expensive at time, depending on the type of durian. This lady here slicing up mangoes. Of course, we're in the big mango. You gotta try some mangoes when you're in Thailand and in Bangkok. Ah, oh, listen to the sound of tuk-tuks, the sound of motorbikes. Down this little side street here is our next destination. Chinatown nightlife and if you're enjoying this you might want to sign up for my regular email newsletter with all sorts of travel tips and hacks I think you'll like it there's a link to join down below so we see our man right there flipping and uh, cooking up some roti a Chinese tea shop here some fresh sorts of squids and fish on sticks ready to be grilled, all sorts of action around here. You can get lost in here. This is one of the little side streets off of Yara Rat. And you see, even here, there's lots of life and different sort of tables and restaurant options you can choose from. I wanted to take you to get an oyster omelet down the little side street that way. I went hunting for it. It's a Michelin guide place. Unfortunately, they're closed on Friday nights. I don't know what kind of business policy that is right across the street from where we had our rolled pork noodles there's a lady here selling crispy oyster omelets hoi tod nam hong i think hoi tod is the omelet so we're going to try to get one of these crispy oyster omelets crispy oyster pancakes hoi tod nam rong oyster pancake crispy Okay, while she's cooking up the oyster omelet, I have a chance to go get a can of beer from the convenience store. There's a lot of oil also in the air. There's lard. They're using sticky rice flour, also an egg that goes in there. Of course, we see the oysters. There's a gooey version of this as well, but I don't like that. That ends up being more like a, uh, a true omelet. This is more like a pancake, a crispy pancake. You have your huge chunks of oysters in there. You dip your sweet, spicy sauce on top. And well, frankly, you have street food goodness. And right there, you have a can of beer from the convenience store. Roy Cop. <laughs> Okay, we have our crispy egg right there, oiled, greased up, along with the flour on a bed of soybean sprouts and of course the piece de resistance, that huge chunk of oyster. Oh, oh yeah. Dandy or a broy cup. Kapung cup. It's good. Yeah. Look at that right there. We get a straight shot of one of these oysters. Mix that in with some of the oily, oozy, goozy, crispy egg batter. Mm. I'll put the pin to this place as well as the Michelin. Yeah, yeah. And the ante there suggests a little bit more of this sweet sauce on there. It all mixes in quite well together. Here we go. Mm. <laughs> If you guys are enjoying all this content here in Chinatown, please give this video a thumbs up. And I know it could be a vanity metric, but the number of subscribers really does matter. It helps me get my videos out to a wider audience and helps other people see the content that you're enjoying. So while you're down there, make sure to also subscribe so you're seeing all the upcoming videos every time I publish. Now, this Chinatown area was established in around about 1782, if I'm not mistaken. King Rama I, he had the Grand Palace put in where it is today, and that used to be Chinatown. And at that point, Chinatown here was established on, in Yarrowrat. And from there, it grew to what we have today, this beautiful Chinatown. There are a couple of different options to get here. One is the MRT, that's the underground subway metro. There are a couple of stops here around Chinatown, so it's easy to get to if you want to go by the subway metro. 
another option. The option I took tonight is motorbike taxi. It'll be faster for you, especially the way they can whiz through traffic. But be warned, you're not wearing a helmet and it can sometimes be, oh, there's so much goodness here. You can just smell the, the aromas and the flavors and the, look for the people where they're lining up at the different stalls and you know that's gonna be a good place to get your street food on. What we just saw back over there, well, that's a Thai coconut pancake. Very good, very delicious. One of the other popular desserts here in Chinatown are the toasted buns. You can get them with different flavors on top, Nutella or a sweet coconut spread, a custard spread as well, or some kind of jam marmalade they put on top. And I think they're around about here. One I particularly enjoy are the rice balls that are served up in a bowl of ginger warm soup. Sounds a bit strange, but trust me, try it, you'll enjoy it. I'm looking for something else tonight. I don't know if you're like me, but I love watching the chefs chop, chop, chop on the wooden chopping boards, or like this guy here, just preparing the noodles, throwing them up in the air, mixing them with the fish balls, and then serving them to the customers. You can tell he's really got a passion and a talent for the food that he's serving. I've been standing here for about five minutes watching him work this walk with that massive flame, flipping up the noodles, getting them cooked to perfection with that perfect wok hay. The man is truly working hard at his job, under pressure, with the heat and the temperatures high. So you have your rice balls and ginger soup, you have the toasted roasted buns, but this is patongo, and it's a peculiar dish. It's similar to a churro in Spain or a donut in the United States, but not quite the same shape and not as sweet. The Thai and the Chinese, well, they love to have this in the morning, and we're gonna try it out. I forgot to mention the final finishing touch on this is that they put them on the grill and they barbecue them uh, to give them that sort of extra crispiness. And the sweet paste I was talking about, that's the pandan. I didn't go with that, I went with the sweet condensed milk. Bam, we are right in it. Patongo, crispy. Sweetened with this condensed milk on top. Worthy of a Michelin Guide Award in 2018, 2019. I do agree, it gets the Gregor Brown Award for 2024. We're standing here in the middle of Chinatown eating sweets. This costs 60 Thai baht for a Michelin guide represented uh, dessert. And these girls are enjoying it. Is it good? Oh yeah. Have you had it yet? No. Oh, you, you gotta get it. Really? <laughs> yeah, go for it. You can try mine if you want. Can we? It's too, it's too much for me. Thank you. It's honey. It's um, sweet condensed milk. Oh, oh condensed milk. <laughs> Let me try. Where are you from? China. China, where? Uh, Hong Kong. Oh, Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. The best thing about food is sharing it with these lovely ladies from China. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Hao Chu? What do you think? Mm, it's sweet. I love it. I love sweet. You love it? it seems like the traditional Chinese food, Yu Tiao. Yu Tiao? Yeah, it's a Chinese and Thai dessert I think. Totally Chinese I think. <laughs> if you guys are interested I put out a Bangkok Essentials e-guide with all sorts of travel information, how to get to and from Bangkok, how to get around Bangkok once you're here in the big mango, things to see, things to do, temples, tuk-tuks, uh, street food, all the restaurants you should visit, where to stay, Airbnbs, hotels, you can download it, have it offline on your phone for when you're traveling up around and about here in Bangkok. There's a link to download it below. Back behind us there, we're getting a look at the famous toasted buns. Everybody's lining up, writing their numbers down, their names down, and the flavor they want inside on the toasted bun. They're quite popular. It's not my jam. The other dessert I recommend that you try is the ginger soup with the rice balls and they're down this way I want to show them to you but we're not going to get them tonight and these right here it looks quite medicinal but that's the ginger soup and inside you can get those rice balls sesame seeds sweet sesame seeds inside the rice balls and she's preparing some of it also there are some other options there you can choose from so you have quite a few dessert options 
around this area. The rice balls in the ginger soup, the toasted and roasted buns, or over this way, which is where I went, those churros, donuts type things, the pantong go. I would recommend those. What was your favorite dish tonight? And have you ever been to Bangkok? Comment down below. I think my favorite is probably the first, the stir fry squid and curry sauce. Watch this video next if you wanna know information on how to get to and from the Bangkok airport once you arrive here in Thailand. Have they turned off the television yet? Changed channels? Have they started to watch that other video? I hope so. Okay, I gotta take a shower. So sticky, hot, sweaty, ah, uh, Bangkok.